The time has finally come. Welcome to another episode. And today we are building, well actually dad's been doing most of this part, but we're finally building an oven in the woods or a pizza oven in the woods. I've been wanting to do this for so long and we've actually talked about it for a few months, haven't we? Uh, and we just thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and just crack on and try and get one done. And so it's next to the kitchen here at the bushcraft camp. There's obviously loads of different ways you can build a pizza oven. Oven. We're just doing it our way. There's going to be things that are wrong. There's going to be things that are okay as long as it cooks a, a pizza. pizza. That's, that's all. We need that's to. all we get. Yeah. Um, so Dad has actually been doing a lot more of the work at the moment because we've realised that every time we come to the woods, I can actually make another film whilst Dad does something. For example, sure. here. Yeah. So because a lot of this has been mixing. Um, the cement in and with the sand and everything like that and it just gets quite repetitive to film so I've actually been making other films things like the, the stealth camping tips film uh, recently and another t camping tips film so it's been nice to be able to come out and make two episodes but at the same time it's a father-son project and today is just focusing on a bit more of the kind of base really that yeah. the pizza Finish oven off. yeah so what we're going to do now is we're going to ball over the top we've got the piece of 18 mil ply there which we're going to put across the top there to give us the base to make a concrete slab. So Mike come up, we've been playing around with suggestions as Mike was saying, we're, we're just sort of, I don't know, we're just doing our own thing. We, we think as we go, don't yeah, we? Yeah, making, not much making up as we go. <laughs> uh, you know, think any better about these things as you do. I put a piece of angle iron in there. I thought, whoa, no, I've actually got, again from Poverty Bill, we had proper rebar, which is what goes in whole houses, you know, for the support goes into what we call the slab, the concrete base, that's really, it's going nowhere. If I tie the two pieces together, it runs from edge to edge there. Trust me, it's going nowhere. All the pressure's straight down on top of here. We can build a citadel or something on top of that if we <laughs> wanted to. I don't know, it's going to look like a sort of citadel type thing. Yeah, Probably yeah, we'll make a nice shape to it. Or a minaret. What's a minaret? That's those tall Like tall a chimney type, yeah. who knows? Cross so and everything. That's where we're at at the moment because you can only do these things in stages. You can't build the base, put all these bricks on because as you tap the bricks down on the top, it pushes the mortar out the bottom. So this has been like a four, four, three or four session build because you have to let it set up. Let it dry, maybe two days, three days, come back, do a bit more. But it's, it's all set up now, so we are ready for the next phase. I would keep that more my side because you've got an off cut of something you might use. Okay. And I've used the edge. Yeah, if we, if we get it set up roughly, you can put a few bricks to sort of keep. Right over, put, it on, put it on the top, we saw it on there, shall we? Might as well. <laughs> Should be 140, yeah, 140. Where's the mark you made? If it's there. There.
what you generally do is make a point of putting your screws in there to stop this springing apart and then if you can cement it over the screw, the screw. <laughs> so that you can't get the screw out <laughs> brilliant Well, it's day 364 of, yeah. <laughs> of the pizza oven build. We're basically about to start making the dome. We've done almost the first row of bricks uh, at the base of the dome. And then w normally, you, obviously you could just put straight sand inside and we're basically making it like a sand castle. You're just patting down some damp, sharp sand uh, and just to create that dome shape. But obviously it would be such a waste of sand and it would take ages if we just did it straight from the base, base plate of the pizza oven. So we thought we'd just fill it with some logs then wrap some plastic over the logs so that the sand doesn't fall through. And then now we only need a thin layer of sand to uh, fill it. However, we've now run out of sand. So we're resorting to a bit of bushcraft. And where I dug my Dakota fire pit in the episodes a few, a few episodes ago, in the stealth camping episode, there's loads of clay. And because it's summer and it's been a drought, it's really crumbly. And so add some water to that and you can squeeze it. And if I show you, oh, it just molds to kind of whatever shape you want it to really. It can be flat, it can be round, and it sticks. And that's ideal. So now we can just use that because we've run out of sand. We won't run out of clay because there's loads here. And we'll just finish off the rest of this dome using this. And then the theory is, once we've bricked up around the dome, once that's all dried and set, we can then go from the inside of the archway down here and pull all those logs out. And you might've seen at the beginning there, is that I was testing putting the logs into the archway because if they were too big to go in the archway then we'd never get them out when the bricks are all bricked in. So good little tip there is to make sure everything can fit through, fit through this front arch otherwise you're going to brick around it and you'll just have a log stuck in the middle. So, But it's dry weather folks. It's 30, another 30 degrees day dad? 35? 34, 34, 34, 35 30 Celsius that is and it's been that for nearly a week now We've had no rain for two months. Easy. Two months. We're in drought conditions. We are. Been an issue today. Yeah, we've had a drought issue today and hose pipe ban and stuff. So we've been, we'll sh later in another episode, you'll see we've been filling up a water butt for the animal watering hole yeah, that worked. we've made. And we've caught some on the trail camera, so that'd be really interesting. But um, yeah, it's just hot, but it's lovely and cool in the, uh, under the hazel in the beach here in the ash and the oak. But um, yeah, bring on, bring on autumn. That's when this will be put to good use. We can't even have a fire in it yet, Dad, because of the drought. No, no, no fires. It'd be deadly. I wonder how many bricklayers are there choking on their coffee at the moment. Watching you do that. <laughs> Watching a man cement with his fingers. <laughs> Anybody who plays about DIYing, don't forget this stuff, cement. That's why I've got gloves on. If you rub your eyes, it will sting. It's, it's an not, irritant. Yeah, 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 it's an irritant, yeah. So, and, and the same on your fingers. If you 
did a lot of it, I don't obviously, but if you did a lot of it, I just find it easier pushing in like this with, with my hand. If you did a lot of it, then uh, you get, I think it's called dermatitis, brick layers, which, yeah. and you get really, really cracked fingers. Brick layers out there, tell us. Is it dermatitis or have I got it wrong? And then you have to put on some stuff, betonavate cream, I think it is, which is a sort of steroidy type thing. So we go for whole brick there. Whole brick now. There's a very high degree of, not craftsmanship, <laughs> guesswork. <laughs> Because we're trying to make... We've never made a pizza oven before. Well, you, it's for Vic laying. I find it strange. We're trying to make a circle out of a square, aren't square we? Square brick, yeah. An yeah. oblong, a rectangle. We've never, we've never done this before. We've laid a few bricks. That has, but yeah. we're not like experts at pizza oven building. We're just, giving it, we're just giving it a crack. And the way we see it, <clears throat> if we can get up to 200 degrees Celsius, like our oven would at home, then we're fine. We're laughing. As long as it doesn't crack, but I'm sure it will crack. And then we won't be laughing, we'll be crying. Every stage is, you've got cement, you know, each stage you've got the mortar, the bricks, and you've got the base, the foundation. Then you've got another foundation base here. So it's like we're constantly yeah. doing it and then having to let it dry and then coming back and each time letting it dry. So in that sense, it's a long build because of waiting for the drying times, but we are lucky with the weather anyway, so. That could be rain and that would have stopped it. Well, exactly. That uh, likes to go, all or nothing usually with his mortar. Yeah, yeah. It will, I'd say it's it, mostly I, all. It will you don't do things in halves with mortar, do you, Dad? Or, no, or just sticks, anything? Glue, paint, anything is going on. Here's a fun story. When I was a kid, we used to play football, me and Dad in the garden, when I was probably, what, nine, eight? Yeah. And uh, it just your standard sort of football. I don't know, size four, size five. And it, this is, this is the, I'm linking to this, the amount of mortar Dad uses and the amount of cement because he always puts too much in anything. Yeah. So we were playing football in the garden. You probably remember this, Dad. Yeah. And, I, and the ball starts getting flat. So Dad says, give it here, I'll, <laughs> oh, I'll pump it up. So obviously, let her, let her obviously, let it, yeah, each football generally has a rating, a PSI rating of like your car tyre of what to pump it up to. Dad ignores those totally. So he pumps this football up, right? And there's meant to be a soft bit of cushion padding on the, on, the, on, the, yeah, on the outside of a football. They all, they all have a little bit of padding. Anyway, that had basically been stretched so much where Dad had pumped it up. And obviously he has the... I'm the goalie, as Dads tend to do. He stick the kid in goal, the son in goal. Yeah. So I'm the goalie and Dad absolutely blasts it. You nearly break your ankle yeah. on this rock-hard football. <laughs> and obviously I go to save it, stings my hands... Yeah. I end up crying, and then a few kicks later, it burst in the middle of it, it, it in the middle exploded. of the uh, the grass of the lawn. It just exploded, and all the bloom came out of the uh, of the leather football. But it was just funny. But that goes to show that he st he still hasn't learned. He no. put too much air in the football, and he'll put too much mortar in the brickwork. But it will stick. But it, it will, will stick. stick. <laughs> Right, folks, we're making progress. We've stuck in the flue, little chimney, has an adjustable damper on it, uh, just there, which we'll, which we'll hopefully use at some point. We have a thermometer here, <clears throat> which I was going to put in, it's going to go lower down. It's got about 30 centimetre kind of probe on it. I was going to put it in and then we were going to sort of mortar and brick over the top. But um, we realised as we sort of filled in the middle with all the sticks and the sand, that this is going to be impossible to kind of get in there. So once we've pulled out all of this lot inside when this is set, we'll probably drill through the mortar somewhere there or maybe lower down 
or about there maybe and then that probe will go in down towards the bottom of the fire bricks and then we can get a good idea each time of how hot our pizza oven is depending on what we're cooking but you can see it's been in the sun if i turn it the right way up and it's over <laughs> it's just about to hit 50 degrees celsius dad yeah <laughs> in the sun feel it. that's nuts crazy hot in the sun so we're going to call it quits after this so bit. yeah we're going to call it a day it's i think so well we're definitely hitting the 30s in uh out here Shady, we're mid 30s easily Never watch this log because we need that water. Yeah. Well, that is as far as we're going to go for this episode. We're no, 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 forever. <laughs> we're, we're quite pleased with it, to be fair. Look, we've never built a pizza oven before. Zero experience of, of making one of these things, but sometimes you've just got to give it a go. Yeah. And uh, the, I guess it might not be as well built as the professional ones, but the concept is the same. It's an oven. It's a kind of pretty much sealed unit where we can cook and bake pizzas, roasts, all sorts of cool things. I just finished off this door uh, from the ash. You guys remember the big giant ash tree that fell through the camp? We have some still milled up like that. So I just made a little handle, screwed that in, and that can just go in there. It's not gonna completely seal it, which is fine. You need a bit of airflow, oh, yeah, yeah. but it would just trap a lot of that heat in for when I'm doing roasts and things like that. Obviously pizzas, I could have it totally open. 
Um, we did add, I can't remember if I talked about this in the last one, but this flue, uh, this is for pizza ovens, this flue. It's got a little damper here at the side and we just cemented that in. Um, and it's got the, the little witch's hat or whatever you want to call it, rain cap at the top, little spark arrestor. To, so any sparks hit that, they get diffused. The forest is nice and safe. Um, admittedly, from doing research, I think the flue needs to be a fair bit higher, probably a metre or so, or at least 60 centimetres above the top of the oven. That's so how I cleaned that but, and I just knocked it down. Yeah, <laughs> you did. That's just us. But, um, <laughs> but it's still going to work and we figure that we can change the height of the flue at any time. We can just get an extension pipe and put on. Mm. Um, we've already, where we've been dusting away some of it here, there's already been dust, hasn't there, Dad? Yeah, coming, yeah, there's been a tiny breeze and a dust has actually been coming up out through the flue. So either way, we're pretty pleased so far with what we've got. Yeah. It's rustic, isn't it, Dad? It's not perfect. It's, old it's a little bit crooked, a little bit crooked, a little bit wonky. Yeah. But do you know what? It adds to the character of it. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. And um, yeah, look, like I say, not experienced building it. It has been a long build, hasn't it, Dad? Yeah, it's been in stages. We've taken, Big stages. put it this way, we probably could have built the entire Saxon house yeah. in almost the same amount of time it took to, to do this. Mainly because we have to wait for all the mortar to dry and things like yeah. that. Well, we have to ship it all in, guys. We, don't, we haven't got a brick pit around the corner and a cement yeah. factory. These are Everything's house, pulled up, up half a mile up the track. So interestingly, fun fact, these bricks are over 100 years old? Yeah, at least, at least, yeah. So the these, these came from your old house? Reclaim one, yeah. The, 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 the old house that you sort of yeah. grew up in. So yeah. a nice bit of history that we're keeping in the Pullen family and keeping it here in the woods, which is nice. Well, I kept them for 25 years, 20, 30 years, I don't know, just in a bit of yard we got, you know, and stored them. So it's just nice to see them used, you know, because mm. I kick the bucket, they're still going to be in this yard. <laughs> well, so they'll outlive both used. of us. They've been used, yes, yeah. so it's brilliant. And my favourite word, four <laughs> letters, free. <laughs> so yeah, we've, we've actually done this pretty much on the cheap, to be honest, haven't we, Dad? Yeah, very Other yeah. than the flu, the, the flue is probably the most expensive bit of it all. The bag, a couple of bags of cement, sand. Yeah, I'd say the flue is the most expensive bit. You've got to drill we, a hole for the thermostat. Yes, the, the thermometer. Remember, folks, this is part one. We've still got things to add to it, like this thermometer, pizza oven thermometer, which we've got to put in. I'm thinking around here, Dad, somewhere. In there. I don't know. Where do you normally put it, guys? Uh, just on the side, I reckon. Um, and we've got some Low slate. Time. I'll just show you this slate that Dad had. A load of slates left over that we bought for... Um, a sort of pallet build. If you go on Mike's channel, you'll find it. It's not the original pallet cabin. It was for it Eve. Was, it, it? it was for Eve, a pallet build. Yeah, and um, slates left over. I over purchased. <gasps> Dangerous. Which, uh, no, it's all turned out good because again, we've got to go and get them. So I figured just to trim up around the edges. Yeah. That can be sort of washed off if you spill anything on it, fat or anything like that. Um, it's just. It just finishes it off basically, and the disc cutter cuts these pretty well. I noticed, yeah, it did. That's, that's, that was really good, yeah. You may have been wondering how are we cutting bricks and getting half bricks and things like that. Well, we just use the portable Jackery um, unit, Explorer 1000, whatever it is. We just use that, uh, charged it up. It can, it can just handle all the power tools that we've been using. We've only used two, which is the jigsaw and the angle grinder. The angle grinder, dad's got there. Yeah, and but that's get that cutting, blade, yeah, that blade just a masonry, absolutely worth it. Masonry and kind of stone cutting wheel. Um, and then I just used the jigsaw to get that curve of this because that would have been almost impossible with the handsaw. So it's just handy to use the jigsaw for that. So it's great to have a bit of portable power. Obviously we love using hand tools, but at the same time, this has taken so long to build. So the next stage, the top's still drying. Yeah. The next stage, once it's dry, is we can pull all this out. Remember there's loads of sand and logs in there. It's gonna be a nerve wracking moment, isn't it Dad? Yeah, because all this has got to come out. Because we've there. got to hope that it stays upright yeah. when we pull it out. Yeah, I think it will. But that is going to have to wait until part two, because this is it for part one. We hope you've enjoyed the episode. Thanks so much. If you want to see us do the first fire, cook the first meal and see if it will totally collapse, you need to hit the subscribe button. And hopefully the next episode out here in the woods will be part two of this. And maybe we cook some food and we don't poison ourselves. Well, listen, I've just been recently trout fishing in the heat wave we're having. And I came home with a very fine trout, didn't I? Maybe it was baker trout. Exactly. It's been yeah. gutted, cleaned, and I'm figuring with these uh, units like this, I guess you don't do a roaring fire to start with. You do something slow. You have to do a small it's fire. almost like slow cookers. Mm. And I figure if we find a way of wrapping and baking a trout, I feel that fish is the way to go after maybe a pizza. Pizza first. Yeah. And a fish is going to be nice, a slow cooker. So we find a recipe. Maybe you guys know a good rainbow trout recipe about this big. <laughs> I don't suppose it's going to fish there. It's not going to fit through there. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. no, oh, what a shame. Oh, it's a big fish. No, but that'll be interesting, actually. Maybe we'll do that. And obviously, we've got to cook a pizza at some point. Yeah. Um, we've got loads of storage underneath for logs. Yeah, so we'll need to fill that up. I've filled up the log store by the camp there. Uh, and then, like I say, there will be a part two where we'll add to it and things like that. So thanks so much for watching. We do appreciate it. Something a little bit different here at the Bushcraft Camp. Could have done it with clay and cob, but to be honest, because we were able to drive a lot of the things in, yeah, and Dad now, had yeah. these old bricks, it was just nice to put those to good use and not let them sit there and just rot away and nothing happened to them. So thank you for watching, guys. Do appreciate it. Check out Dad's channel, TA Fishing. There's a link in the description below, and we will catch up with you guys in the next episode.